Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. So, you know, Brexit doesn't keep me awake at night. Donald Trump doesn't keep me awake at night. The political meltdown that's going on in the UK, the amount of plastic pollution we have in our oceans, even the latest announcement that the eighth continent is a big garbage patch doesn't keep me awake at night. Because despite the fact that even those are huge, huge issues in and of themselves, what does keep me awake at night is a thousand times worse. I am declaring a climate emergency and I'm inviting you to join a rebellion. Now, I know that sounds a little bit bonkers, so let me explain just a little bit. So some of you might have seen me posting to Facebook and so on about Extinction Rebellion and um, might be wondering like, what the heck is all that about? So I just wanted a few minutes of your time to talk to you about something that I just can't stay silent about anymore. Um, so I'll try to be short and concise, which for a lot of you know, that's quite a challenge for me. But I also recognise that this is a huge topic that can't easily um, be sort of c condensed either. So just to say that. So first of all, there's the science. You know, as, as smart, educated and intelligent people, it will not have been lost on you that a climate crisis is well underway. Um, what I didn't know until recently, actually, is that the window by which we can act is closing much more rapidly than I ever imagined. But the science is really clear. The latest IPCC report says that we have about a 1% chance of hitting the pledges that we made in the Paris Agreement three years ago, and that was to keep global warming as close as possible to a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise by 2030. That's 1% chance. You know, if this was a business and you had 1% of hitting a target, somebody's head would be, would roll, you know? Um, the WWF report also shows that we are basically experiencing the sixth mass extinction, um, with 60% of our wildlife having been wiped out since the 1970s. So on our current trajectory, we're gonna wait, make the world an uninhabitable place within just a few hundred years. Even if we stopped everything tomorrow and fulfilled all of our pledges, the optimistic prediction is that we would achieve a three degrees Celsius warming by the end of this century. Anything over 1.5 degrees Celsius is considered dangerous. So just to say that. Now, of course, there are gonna be huge different responses to this. Um, some of you um, are probably already very engaged in this and are wondering, Jess, where the hell have you been? Well, hi, I'm here. Um, some of you will be quite anxious and worried about what I'm telling you and perhaps um, you weren't aware of the full facts. Um, and then there'll be others of you who disagree with what I'm saying or the science. So just to say that, you know, all reactions are welcome here. I'm not here to judge anybody. You know, you are my, my friends and my family. So just to say, I'm not here to judge. Um, and listen, I never considered myself to be an activist before this. Um, what I will say is that the people that I've met through this movement are smart, rational people, just like you and me. Um, I look to my left and there's somebody my niece's age. I look to my right and there's somebody your grandpa's age. And I look in front of me and there's people just like you and me. So it's pretty clear that we're facing an emergency of, on an unprecedented scale. Um, and the censorship surrounding it and the failure of our leaders to act appropriately with urgency poses just as much of a human and civil rights um, issue as it does an existential and environmental one. Um, this represents a breach of the social contract between us and our incumbent government. So philosopher John Locke said that when a government fails to protect the lives and livelihoods of its citizens, the people have a right to rebel. Well, alrighty then, here we are, rebelling. So when we say we're rebelling, what are we actually rebelling for? So Extinction Rebellion has three very clear demands, the first of which is that the government needs to tell the truth about the situation that we're in. The second is that they put in place plans to achieve zero carbon by 2025, that's six years away, not 12, um, and that they form citizens' assemblies to help make decisions. Now, Extinction Rebellion aren't claiming to know all the answers, um, but they're trying to put in place a framework to help us move towards those answers collectively. So how are we gonna do it? You know, I'm inviting you to a rebellion, but you know, what does that actually mean? So traditional techniques and normal channels of protests over the last 30 years, they just haven't worked. Um, campaigning your local MP, signing petitions, going on rallies and marches and so on, they just haven't worked. Um, this has even sort of been immortalized in every disaster movie. You know, everyone, every, well, every one of those movies starts off with some politician poo-pooing a scientist. Um, we're basically one flick in the opening sequence of that movie. Um, and 
what's needed and what Extinction Rebellion is all about is strategic, non-violent, direct action. So that means respectfully and peacefully disrupting the status quo with acts of mass civil disobe disobedience. Now, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here, following in the footsteps of the civil rights movement in the 1960s. So, international rebellion will start on the 15th of April, and this means blockading the streets of London, causing economic disruption um, in major cities, not just in London, but around the globe, to elevate the conversation. Everyone's going to be welcome, so that's kids, elders, animals, um, you know, you've got to come down, find me, check it out, I'm going to be there. Um, there are going to be street parties, talks, art, theatre, productions, you know, it's going to be a serious action, um, but it definitely won't be a sombre affair, um, but it's also not a school trip either. So, look, this isn't about being impeccably green either, none of us are, this is about recognising that there's a problem. Um, making a start and doing what you can to be part of the solution. So is it going to work? The truth is, I don't know, none of us do, but it's got to be worth a try. You know, on a personal level, um, I need to be able to look my niece in the eye and to tell her that I did all I could when I had the chance. And, you know, research shows us that movements that have 3.5% of the population united and motivated by the greater good that also uses a strategic non-violent direct action approach have succeeded in affecting change. So again, think about that civil rights movement in the 1960s. In the past three years, the UK government has struggled to find even one way to unite a divided nation. Well, I've got two. Disappointment in our failing government and survival of life as we know it on planet Earth. So, you might also be thinking that we've surely got some alternative. Maybe it doesn't have to come to this so far. Maybe a few more emails to our local politicians, maybe a few more campaigns on Facebook, maybe a few more petitions. Um, but, you know, I would ask you that if not now, then when? And if not this, then what? And if not you, then who? Who's going to do it? So the next UN climate summit is going to happen in six months in September. At that summit, our world leaders are going to be expected to come prepared to report not only on what they're doing, but more to the point, what they intend to do. Um, commitments are going to be renewed and ambitiously increased because the UN are calling this an emergency and they're acting like it is one. So this is about us holding our incumbent government to account to make sure they've done their bloody homework. It's not about waiting until 2030 only to find out that the dog's eaten it. Um, whilst the science is grim, the good news is that we do still have time to turn this around. We just need the political will to do so. The power is with, still with the people, and they are rising. This is the beginning of the great mass movement so many of us have been hoping to see, and it starts this year, and it starts with us. So I ask you to join the movement, rebel if you can, um, come down on the 15th, come and see what it's all about. Um, if you can't rebel, then volunteer. Find your local group. If you can't volunteer, then donate maybe your time or your money to the cause to go towards renting um, church Methodist halls and things like that for meetings and for printing um, posters and banners and so on. If you can't donate, then speak up, you know, demand the truth. And if you're unable to speak up, then make sure that our voice is heard. Maybe share our posts and tell your neighbours what's going on. So if you want to see a better world and you're prepared to do something about it, then welcome to the rebellion. Thank you.